Hello everyone, I am Alka103 and welcome back to my F121 My Team Career Mode. Last time you saw episode 0, the setup of this My Team Career Mode, and now it is time for the proper episode 1 with the first race weekend here on the Bahrain International Circuit. There have been a few minor changes since the previous episode. I upped the difficulty by 1 based on my own career mode. I felt I wanted to uh, increase it a bit because I've gotten more used to the handling model and the game, so has been increased. I've also changed the look of the character that we are playing as. It's still called Reese, Reese Butterfly, but Reese Butterfly is now uh, used the American nationality and does now use the face of uh, the character that I called Adriana in when I did the character creator. You might remember from episode zero. Outside of that, I don't believe there's any changes. Uh, my intention for this is I'm going to stream the full thing on Twitch if you ever want to see the full race weekend, including practice and all the little edits that I make. Come to my Twitch streams. I'll do them, let's say, once a week, once twice, uh, once every two weeks or so. Uh, I try to do two race weekends in a stream. I might do one depending on the time that I have or how things go. And, then, and there will definitely be things that I leave out of the YouTube edit. For the YouTube edit, I intend to do some... Uh, you have a lot of me talking through this like I do on my Twitch stream, but occasionally I'll add on some commentary um, post-edit um, if I feel like it works somewhere, especially during the race, that might work out. Let's throw in some upgrades. We're really upgrade. Tire wear is the most important to me. I want tire wear the moment I can. As soon as possible, I want tire wear upgrades. Fact. It does look like chassis and aero are usually the weakest things to start with, so outside of chassis, I'll probably work on aero first because we already have some chassis upgrades right here, which does mean I can go for a, for major chassis stuff immediately, which can really help me, but I don't want to ignore the upgrades I can do for uh, aero. So I'll try to mix and match them here and there, especially once I can get some more R&D points. I can do two upgrades at once for chassis, um, but I also always want to have one of them going for tire wear, because tire wear is king for me. Probably do aerodynamics on that, and then power chain, then maybe durability, but just the resource point generation, because I don't intend to spend much on durability at all during Season 1. Marketing, I did on my personal career mode. Gonna ignore that a bit early on, and go for personnel a bit later. Um, but for now, I think aerodynamics, then power chain. But I want, I, I'm going to take the team acclaim. And then one of the, these ones. 50% is huge. I think I might want to take the this acclaim. I would take this. Actually, no, 500 resource points. That is huge. I'll take the arrow and chassis focus. We just have Duotone as our primary sponsor at this time. They want us to achieve five points finishes during a season, which I feel might be somewhat difficult, but I already have a few points finishes in my standard career mode. I'm only just halfway through the season then, so things are definitely possible. Car still under covers. You'll see what it looks like very soon. The department has some good news to share. They've just finished working on a facility upgrade. The details are available in your inbox. That's something that annoys me as well about this game, is the I only get that message when I pause it. So when I forget to put in activities in the activity time, they only tell me when I pause right at the end of everything. Like, oh, you should put more time into the management of the timetable. I'm like, y you tell me that at the end. Th that's not helpful. Right, so now we're going to corporate. Driver perks immediately throw in development feedback, because I want resource points. Time to reveal what a card looks like, shall we? Oh, wait, first, we can already do an arrow upgrade. Haha. -ha. We have 550, we have 525. Let's throw in the front wing upgrade. Boop. Get that working. Might be done a bit earlier. When's this one done? Nine days. Is that done before the season starts? Yes, it is. Go to car reveal.
this is the car. The Pokemon car that we will be driving in our first season. In the middle of the car, you'll be able to see the red and the white sort of symbolizing the Pokeball. And then I chose green for most of the rest of the car. Um, because I feel like that's a nice color combination. I also really like just the red, white, and green on the front wing, how that combines. Uh, arrow focus for 500 extra resource points. And I'm actually going to wait. We had a major issue no, we had a failure on the... This week. So the to start off with, no. This weekend has failed. That sucks. Redevelopments will need to be ordered from Absolutely the redevelop. I was hoping it would work. Obviously, I would hope everything would work, because it saves me time and resource points. But then I could immediately throw in the heat, the heat dampers. But roll dampers again. First of April, we'll get it, and then the rest comes later. Working on the front downforce as well. Our money will slowly work towards this. We're not getting much yet because, well, we just started the game. Don't get that much of weekly income, but once the sponsors come in and we get more team acclaim, we'll get a lot higher. Let's go to Bahrain. Hey, welcome to the team. I'm your head of R&D. My name's Charlie. Please make yourself at home. You're going to be using this workstation pretty regularly over the coming months, so spend some time to get familiar with it. You should be able to access everything from messages to vehicle development. Alright. This is our workstation. Teammate Christian Lungard right across from us. Also, this is uh, what the character looks like now. I felt that that would fit the character better, sim similar to the American nationality. Morning boss, Jeff here. Thanks again for bringing me on board. You've found a lot of talented people for this team. I can't wait to see what we can accomplish. Our journey to the Constructors Championship starts here today, and the car is ready to head out whenever you are. All right. Let's see, race strategy is always there. That's the best and the easiest one. I, I will always do track acclimatization, even if it's not a practice program, just because I want to get acclimatized to the track. And I generally test where I want to deploy my ERS during track acclimatization as well. And then during race strategy, I re-verify that it works uh, on that tire as well. We get quality pace too. That's usually my worst one. In the chat. I can't read them immediately because they don't have double monitors. So I can't just look to the left or to the right. Not to look at it, I have Twitch open on my phone, and I'll read that between the things that I do. Especially in between practice, I can do that. Quality sessions. The race will be harder. And you probably have the most comments during the race. There are some zones. Program complete, program complete. These results will do, although you could definitely do better. Consider giving it another shot. Yeah, quality pace is hard, so I didn't get the purple. I did get all three of the development boosts, which is awesome. With the retire from session because I know I've done everything. Make sure I click retire from session and not restart because I've done that before. I did restart the entire thing. Or I went back to main menu so we didn't save. It's time to remind ourselves I think I missed the purple three. resource Duarte points Hamilton, on this. Bottas, and Lando and then, Norris. I think and one, if today's one of the practice is anything to go in by, we're in for an exceptional weekend of Formula One. I swear I put it on 93 difficulty. Now, I went. This is not my optimal pace in the soft tire, but it is somewhat close to it. The others probably held back. Lundgaard 15th, though. Gives me good hope. Now, both Aston Martins did run the hard, so they're probably faster, put in P17, but Lundgaard might be able to fight for getting into Q2. Then we get our first resource points, and I expect that Christian Lundgaard is not going to bring in much many resource points at all. He had no development feedback bonus. No practice program is perfected, but then again, starting a driver. Don't expect too much from him. So that's like maybe a little glitch. I don't really know what to call it. It's different. Got a lot of acclaim, but it's easy to get to level 2. That just gives us a little more money from sponsors. Hope to get to level 5 soon. Yeah, let's throw in another chassis upgrade. Boop. Oh, yeah, because we have the. We had an upgrade. Not an upgrade, but a thing early on with team where we have extra happiness in this development. Not development, this department. 
Can't do this one, doesn't matter. I'll probably have more after the race. Then get my standard weekly resources. So, minor tire wear is going, minor front downwards, major weight redistribution. Weight reduction is probably a little better, but I didn't have the discount there, and I like discounts. Get out of Q3, the, the Q1, which is the goal, which I think I can do with the performance of the car right now. But I'll probably qualify something like a 15th. If I get out of Q1, it means I beat six cars, which could be like Haas, Williams, and then like my team and then one of the Alpha Males. And then I have a fight with Raikkonen for P15. That's what happened somewhat regularly early on in my uh, standard. I'm definitely faster than Russell. Slipstream will help. And the end of the lap, where I'm probably closest to him, is where Slipstream will be the strongest, because I'm well, closest to him. So here's some dirty air effects. It'll be a bit slower, but that Slipstream will help me towards him. So this might just be my fastest lap. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling the dirty air there. Dirty air is stronger in this game than in the previous, which is good. Probably more realistic. A bit too close than I would have liked. But as long as he doesn't break super early, I can make it. This does give me a really strong slipstream going to the finish line. This is probably going to be my best lap. Let's see if you made it. Ooh, the Alpines are ahead, Ansonota. We did. All right. Oh, they got close. Even Lungard got the 28-2. Happy with Lungard though. Beat both Haas, beat both Williams, and beat the Alfa Romeo in his first race. So that's that just means our car is looking very good. So our car, my car definitely wasn't as good when I started my career with the other game. I give slightly different answers. Still my chassis, the first, like, facility upgrades. Looking good, and I don't even have that tire wear upgrade, which in qualifying you don't really notice. But in the race you do, and that's obviously where you get the points. Alright, so what I expect is I can, I can beat Raikkonen in, in Q2, and then maybe get ahead of, like, an Alpine or an AlphaTauri. I prefer to start 11 and then we'll be 10 out 12. So I'll finish a lot. Finish quite a lot. I know the gap to science is... What did I say? 3 tenths? 3 and a bit tenths? So I knew this was safe and wouldn't get me into Q3. If this is P11, I'd be really happy. Should be. Yes, P11. Knocked out. Happy with that, actually. That's not what I expected. This car, this now that I'm more a lot more used to the controls than when I started my other my team career mode. This is wow. I'm already thinking should I increase the difficulty even further? But like I've done other races in other cars, also on my team car, and I feel like this is the right one. And I've already opted by one compared to when I did this with the other team, and I'm doing much better here. Just the vehicle performance is better. Which Lundgaard proved as well by immediately getting P17. Starting P11? Don't expect to get points, but there's options. Months of rumor and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We'll be racing around 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit today. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left down into the tricky braking zone of Turn 10. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One 
underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice, and they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Norris, Vettel, Sainz, Leclerc, and Lance Stroll. The captain, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, and Ocon, Sonoda, Raikkonen, Christian Lundgaard, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Russell, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, and Nikita Mazepin. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. All right, looking good. Starting P11, Christian Lunger starting P17. Don't expect them to get points. Wait, I can do soft to hard because of my tire wear being that good. It doesn't save me that much, but it'll probably help me defend early on. I'll do a little more laps in the hards, but it's probably good. Uh, generally go for plus half a lap on fuel. What I'm thinking also is I could do hards first and then softs later to attack. But I probably, if I have softs first, then those that are faster in the race, likely the Alpha Tauris, the Alpines, I can keep them behind me longer, which costs them more time. I don't have a rival yet, so when I have a rival or I'm like really at the f like fighting for the big points in the championship, I might try and do the softs at the final stint just to have the better chance of a fastest lap. Either fastest lap of the race for the point, or just at least a faster lap than my rival to get more points in the rivalry. But this seems smart for early on, just to get ahead with softs and then block. Could go a lap sooner, which doesn't change much time. Maybe if I'm stuck behind someone, I might want to do that. Could do a lap later, but that costs me a second because I lose a lot of performance. So maybe a lap earlier. Probably I want this. I expect a like, 13th, 14th finish. I expect to be overtaken, but I can defend well. And if I can make use of the AI sort of being stuck together on lap one. This might be really good. Let's do this 50% race around Bahrain International Circuit. The My Team Career Mode. Let's get it properly underway. Very surprised with that good start. That's not different. Yeah, I would have probably been able to get alongside Leclerc if it wasn't for the last place. I'll take it. I don't think he hit any front with the front wing. Maybe slight side blow damage. I didn't want to overtake. They go so slow through the court. I thought I might get Norris. But then it goes so much faster. That, that's something I, I just need to learn from my own, like, improve my own racecraft. It's just breaking earlier in the early laps. To overtake, this is awesome. And I have softs compared to their like slightly huge softs or mediums of the other cars. But yeah, breaking a bit earlier in those situations because of uh, a bit of downforce of the dirty air affecting me. Constantina effect. Not fully used to that yet. So I I would have expected to be behind Beto. I'm going to check if I'm actually on 93 difficulty, because that's what I should be on. 93 is what I use. Yeah, I'm on 93. All right, let's go for it. Let's see if I can get away from Vettel in the game. Considering there's some stuck behind Vettel, maybe Vettel has some damage. The thing is, if I hit other people, cause them damage, but I don't get a warning for it, even if I, even if, whether I do or I don't, yeah, Vettel has damage. Now what I think is, in that overtake that I didn't intend on Vettel, I damaged his front wing, which makes him slower. 
I didn't have any kind of notification about it. If I would have gotten a warning, I would have known, oh yeah, I need to check the replay. Because then what I usually do is click replay, not necessarily redo the overtake, but I take a look at the damage I caused. If I feel like it's my own fault, I'd undo it and try the overtake again, be safer. But I didn't get any notifier about it, so like, I didn't even know I hit him and damaged him. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going. It does annoy me though. I would want to re get, go back to entry to turn four last lap, but it's too long now. And now I have an advantage on all the other cars that I shouldn't have had as well. Oh, one of the Ferraris is damaged. Oh, let me guess. It's Leclerc, who I was next to through turn two. I know I was three wide and I was in the inside, but there wasn't much more space that I could have given there, so I don't feel like that's really my fault. If it was gotten damaged, chances are it was. Maybe it wasn't, it could have collided with someone else too. Or Norris didn't give enough space or whatever. But, yeah. This does annoy me and I'm gonna have to live with it, unfortunately. It doesn't feel fair. Monaco, watching the race is fun. I really like the watching the Monaco race. And I think YouTubers doing it, it can be really fun. But on controller, Monaco is just such an inconsistent track. It's just not doable for me to drive it consistently. For sure, there might be some good laps, and I can improve on how to, how to turn in, where to turn in, turn in angle. But the main problem is correcting a mistake. If I know that I turn in slightly early, then on a wheel, I could just slightly open the steering. It's really hard to open the steering on it on a controller. Very quickly, it'd be um, too much, and then I really compromise the corner, lose half a second, or I, or I hit the wall on the other side. It's very frustrating. Let's see. There's some gaps. Doors behind me. There's a bit of a gap to storm. For how am I faster than storm? I'll take it, I'll take points in my first race, so that'd be very surprising. I'm not gonna really fight Norris. If he give, gives a proper attack, I will. Like, I'll let him through. But here he just Yellow goes track. for a minor, minor thing, so. Ooh, Bottas spun! I wanna see what happened. So that's why I can use a replay. Look at what Bottas did. Did he do it on his own? Yeah! Too much throttle on the inside curb. Valtteri made an error. AI can do that, which I do like. It's not too common, but they make mistakes, which also makes me be okay with personal mistakes more and not wanting to do it. Okay, Lando, just don't overtake here. Overtake went straight, please. Why is Buddha still stuck there? That's one thing I don't like about the AI. Like, sure, they can make mistakes, but they take way too long to get back on the track. I know they have to do a safe rejoin, and it's hard to program it, probably. But he could have gone on the track way easier. Now he's in 18th. I'm gonna let Lando through here. This is a proper enough attack. Let go, save with the field, maybe. Get behind him. Follow him through, get a little bit of slipstream. Because if I fight him, I'm just gonna lose even more time in the long run. I need to pick my battles. I know Norris will beat me in the end because the McLaren is way faster than Team Pokemon. If someone ahead, this another person have a problem ahead. I'm gonna get another position. Perez. Perez with an engine failure already on lap five. What? All right, let's see this. Yeah, retiring from that, it, he should have gone to the side earlier. It was a bit dangerous for Lando. Could have been even more dangerous depending on the other on the track and the location. But. Paris is out. <clears throat> so, Bottas, maybe through his pizza strategy and just being really fast on Mercedes, he'll get me back closer to the end of the race. Paris is out, so that's just a free position. I'll take it. Green flag. No, so if, I remember on F1 2020, every time anyone would retire, at least through the mechanical failure, of which there was at least one 
basically every race. It was a safety car. The last two seasons I did an F1 2020. Every race had a safety car. So I could always do my strategy, my tire strategy, knowing that it would be a safety car at some point. I expect Lana to pit this lap, which means we're going to lead the GP. And Hamilton and stuff, they'll, they're stuck in the midfield. That's one of the main reasons I did 100% on F1 2020. The strategies are much more realistic. Hamilton shouldn't be stuck behind anyone because the tires in 100% also last twice as long. So on tracks like Monaco or Hungary, just go long on your first stint and you won't be stuck in midfield. Damn, that loses me a lot of time. That's just all the tires I miss. And you won't be stuck in midfield if you pit early. So on a track like Hungary, if you're smart, and especially if you have good tire wear, you can beat so many people that start on softs. If they do, a, let's say, a two-stop on that track where it's really hard to overtake, or even a one-stop from softs to hards, and they get stuck in the midfield and not be able to overtake for a while, or be able to overtake maybe one car every one two laps, you can get a lot of time on them just by going long uh, on the first stint. Yeah, definitely losing time to Alonso now, plus way much. I gained a lot in the early laps, which is an advantage. Oh, yellow, somewhere. I would come out B12. That's even with some people not having hit it yet. <gasps> yes, safety car! Perfect! Who's out? Who's out? I don't know who's out. Car's out. I don't know. Into the bits we will go. E I E I E I O. I don't know what happened to cause a safety car. Is there anyone going slow? I don't know, but this is perfect. I wanted to go to the pits already. I'm going to get my free pit stop. The medium runners will stop us all because they can go to hearts now. But I'm going to be even farther ahead than I would have normally been. Christian is in the pits. Christian in the pits. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. Receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross I think over I track. just beat him to safety car line one. Immediately, or no? we will okay. be penalized. There is no overtaking during the safety car period. You just beat him to the safety car line. Okay. So P5. And those that pitted for mediums, who are on the two-stop strategy, are screwed. Because the two-stop strategy people have already pitted. So they have to pit, they either have to pit here, which would probably be the smartest, to, to pit to hearts and just be like, okay, we're at the back, let's see what we can do. Or what I think Stroll and Leclerc are doing, they, they start on softs, I assume, and they go up something. Let's see where F1 is. Lift guard, watch towards the back. That came out of the perfect time. Would have been slightly better, I guess, if it came out a second earlier. Because then I feel like it would have been able to stay ahead of Norris. Like, Norris would be able to overtake me anyway. Wait! Norris and Ricardo are on mediums. They have to stop again. Probably can't hold on that long. They have to stop again. There's Leclerc behind me and some other cars. Looks like there's an Alfa Romeo that hasn't stopped yet. Considering they're probably on medium to hard strategy, but maybe they're on hard. Looks like race director. What tire is everyone on? Soft, soft for Bottas. So he's going medium again. So he has to stop again. Raikkonen and Alonso already stopped. On their safety car. So Raikkonen must have gained a lot of time because some of them probably double stacked. Like Alcon. So Raikkonen gained some time. He has to stop again. There's no one going for the one stop. All of the medium runners went soft. I guess maybe on the safety car it might seem smart. But Lundgaard gained some time. On some people. Is ahead of Vettel now? I guess it makes sense that he's ahead of Vettel. Perez is out. Sonoda. They pitted and then pitted again. Huh? 
What are they doing? So I'm the only one that doesn't have to stop. So I expect Hamilton for some will be able to get away. And he'll be able to beat me. Ricardo Norris, especially considering they're in faster and on better tires, they probably can make a gap. They'll get behind me. They'll be behind me after their stop, next stop, but then still be able to beat me. Everyone else, though, has, like a stroll, Leclerc, chances are they'll have a good chance of overtaking me, but I can probably hold them back for at least a few laps. And every few laps I keep them behind me will be laps that they can't speed away from me, which means they'll definitely be behind me after the pit stop, and then they have a harder time overtaking me again. I can even beat Bottas. There's Raikkonen who will hold up some people. This is... No, this is not looking bad. Lungard P14. I expect him to get points, but... Vettel from signs at a front wing must have had an incident. Sonoda hit someone on lap 7. Gasly won a lap 9. It's a bunch of things. Why do people pay here? Yeah. Alright, looking good so far. To make a gap here, because you usually get a safety car restart, but it's hard to judge when we can actually start going and overtaking. Ready to go racing again. The safety car is in this lap. When the field accelerates, remember there you is no really, overtaking until like, the green flag. Really, like, listen without the game's program. I, I can move back on the stroll, and you won't be able to catch up. Oh, perfect restart, get alongside Norris. Could have stayed on the inside there for the car, but that would just compromise all the corners. I want to stay ahead if I'm well enough ahead in the corner. I expect him to overtake at some point anyway. Just like with Stroll and or Russell behind me, I think it's Leclerc. Even if I can keep him behind for one or two laps, it just increases the chance that people will stay behind me. I expect that Norris will be able to get past me in a few laps and then beat me in the end. But if Norris stays behind me, that means there's... as long, Yeah, if Norris is the first car behind me, that means Stroll just doesn't have a chance to attack me, therefore get past me. So even people like Stroll and Leclerc will stay behind me for longer periods of time. Which then gives me a better chance of staying ahead of them. Have to leave him room, but Norris come on do a better attacking job. So probably still on stroll up and really hard then. After that once they really start getting along with me easy on see. Like Norris if he plays a good attack I'll let him go. I'm not gonna go hard here. Yeah. That one's for Norris. See if I can stick in the slipstream. Have his DRS, because DRS is available now. Maybe I can have that for one or two straights. Makes it a little easier to defend against those behind. But I could still beat Norris. If I'm fast enough, hopefully keep up with Norris for a little bit. And then he has to pit, and then sure, he'll be on mediums, and then obviously even fresher tires than my heart. So one, it's, it's a softer tire. And they're a lot fresher because they pitted and I didn't. Then if they catch me again, it'll work out. Once us pits now, race. goes to last place. He pitted for softs for some reason again. So he'll probably go to hards now. Which means... Maybe they didn't... Oh, maybe because of my tire wear. Just because of the way I drive. The game predicted that I could just make it on hard tires. And they, they just couldn't for the AI. Even though you're behind safety car for two laps, which is barely any tire wear. I feel like I still should have done it. But none of the AI probably did it, because the calculation that was made for their cars with their standard tire wear, that expectation was, oh, you just can't make it. Which is going to work out epic for me, because I know I can. Here's the longer straight, here's the DRS. But already pitting. Alonso was on softs and is pitting later than Leclerc, who was on mediums. I'm going to assume Alonso has better tire weather than the Ferraris. 
Because I don't know where the upgrades of the other teams are. What does fast slap? That makes very much sense. Overtakes Leclerc, who was just behind me. So he might actually have Norris. Or he'll be around Norris by the time Norris pits. So that gap between Norris and Leclerc was like five to six seconds, I think. Let's say five seconds. Let's already ahead of Leclerc. And yeah, they'll be around each other, but Norris will have the fresher tires. So that's his advantage. Uh, didn't think about that well enough. Didn't use enough ERS here. Not to put my corner. But as I said, I don't expect to beat Norris, so as long as I have some block stroll here, it'll be good. However, losing a lot of time blocking stroll here isn't super advantageous necessarily anymore because Leclerc pitted. Every time I lose on stroll here, well, I don't lose on Stroll. I lose with Stroll, really. For my fight against Stroll against Alonso, it doesn't really matter. Because I'm still ahead of him, and if I lose time, they lose time. But Leclerc has pitted. I'm looking at them. Bits and bits, let's go. Okay, I'm going to lead the race again. Hamilton will beat me. I expect for stopping more. They might be stuck in... in they not really stuck in traffic, but I expect they will be in traffic a little bit. Maybe not now. Is that a Williams that's going? It might be Williams in the main map that's just behind him. Doesn't matter, just Ricardo might need a lap. But then again, a McLaren and fresher tires into William and older tires should take long. And then it's three people on softs behind me. How are the people on softs behind me and the mediums have already bit it? Huh? They must have tire wear upgrade, I guess. What comes from Mugger Giovinazzi? Even if it's not for long, even if it's, it causes them to compromise a the line, they can keep people like Hamilton behind. Hamilton will beat me. Oh, Bottas is close to Ricardo. Bottas is going for P4. He had an epic undercut. Yeah, he's going to be ahead of Norris. For sure. So Bottas for P4, even fighting for P3 now, even after being last. And then 10th, I guess, after the pit stop, because he already beat it. We didn't have to wait. There's a lot of them double stacked on that pit stop. That's what helped with us, too. Hamilton now stuck behind Schumacher and Giovinazzi. He can get past them on the DRS here, but probably they'll pit around this place. Yeah, we already got past one of them. Still has a compromised line, so just some time. And Reese Butterfly, once again, leads the Bahrain GP. Huh. I'm not going to win it. I expect Hamilton to. Uh, he'll probably get me within two laps. Well, like in two laps, he's going to be way faster. But this isn't looking too bad. At all. Hamilton will probably get fastest lap. But who can I keep behind? Norris is pitted. Norris is not too far behind Baltas. This is the thing. Out of the top five, that isn't me. It's Hamilton, Verstappen, Ricardo, Bottas, Norris. How many of those can I keep behind? I expect everyone behind Norris. So that's Stroll, Leclerc, Alonso, who seem to still be together, which is interesting. Out of those, how many can I keep behind? Maybe I can keep Norris behind. But especially if Norris gets within DRS and Bottas, he might be able to get to me. But I think my task now is to actually not use as much ERS, even if I, even if I want to use ERS to stay away from people. I think it'd be best if I save a little more ERS because it'll be much more important on the defense. And then once we get to later laps, when people like Bottas and Norris will be closer, I'll decide exactly how much of, how much longer I want to save. Because I feel like it's if it's inevitable that Norris will pass me, I won't really use much ERS on defense against him as well. Just so I have more left for my defense against Stroll. Because look at the gap between Norris and Stroll. That's the gap that partially was created by the fact that I just held them up. Norris is able to get through. He'll probably get me, but it'll he's still over 11 seconds behind me, so I feel like I could still beat Norris. And his main tire advantage is right now. And at the end of the stint, it'll still be there, but it'll be a lot less. Which would be good, because that means I get DRS off. Also, in case safety car, I might, I'll send that to soft just 
I'm going to get past already. I want DRS from you. I did go off throttle there. Lost me a bit of time, but that meant I'm behind Hamilton okay, here. Keep on in. I was behind no, Hamilton at stay. DRS detection. Which then wins me time back with DRS here. Also allows me to stay in the slipstream for a little longer, gains me time. Gap to teammate behind is 28.0 seconds. Everyone has, will have pitted at this point. There's an Aston Martin at the back, not having fun. Here's again, nice. Where's one guard? We're leading our teammate by 27.7 seconds. They're on fresh mediums. They're in 12th. The time last lap was a 133.7. That's really good. So he gained two positions. I think he's the one leading that big group. Either 11 or 12, I just did quick counting on the minimap. Alright, I hope Verstappen gets past me, not here. Don't make me compromise the corner. Thank you. I hope he'll try to pass me on the same place Hamilton did. Not here! Freaking Max. Just wait, I'm, I'm gonna let you go on the way to the final braking zone here. Okay, now go. And I'll get behind you with your ass. Just pass! Okay, he's that far away. I'm not gonna break for him. I'm not gonna win that time back. Hamilton either must have way more downforce to be able to get past, or way more straight line speed. Not sure which it is. Norris, Hamilton, uh, Norris, Bottas, Ricardo definitely getting closer. It'll be interesting to see how much I can keep them behind, but including this lap, seven laps to go. I feel like I can keep at least Norris behind. I expect my goal really, the, realistically, is fifth place. Ricardo and Bottas would get through in that scenario and stay ahead of Norris. Norris is just outside their DRS. If Ricardo is behind me now, get, gives me a good enough fit and attack, I'll sit in his DRS, maybe Bottas soon after, which gains me a bit of time, which allows Norris to not press and pop attack for another extra lap or so easier to defend against him. His advantage on the medium will shrink a little, because his tires will degrade more. i just let him go here. I'm just, yeah, I'm not going to attack him. Well, this is a bit more of a gap. I'll, I'll defend both of us. Actually. If I can keep both of us behind for a while, while staying behind Ricardo, that could also mean um, Bottas blocks off Norris for a bit. Bottas... Lose the space. Yeah. Lose me so much time if he attacks there, just attack later. Now Norris is within my DRS already. Okay, focus. We need to stay on form. Right, I'm gonna defend hard against Norris. The gap to Stroll's 12 seconds. It's four and a half laps to go. Oh no. I thought it was DRS, I wouldn't have to defend that one. DRS. I didn't. But I'm not gonna have DRS off of both times from this one almost. If Norris overtakes me, I'll just let it happen and then I'll be happy with B5. But that's still an epic result for the team. The teammate behind is 25.2 seconds. They're on old Ten. mediums. They're in 12. The time last lap was a 1 minute 32.0. Although if I use DRS, ERS here, he'll be a bit farther away, which means this DRS will be not as strong early on. I know the slipstream. Yeah, he's going to get me here. I'll sit behind him, maybe I can do something with DRS in the next bit. Get him back, but otherwise I'm just gonna freeze him. Yeah, he's gone. Norris got me. I'm gonna chill and take pieces. I don't have a rival yet, so I need to focus on getting a super fast lap. Which I could have said here, I guess. Actually, I'll try that. I'm just going to not use ERS. This lap, next lap, and then 
find a lap was really hard with the RS. Let's see if I can improve my personal best time. Let's push it. Get a fast slap. No, not fast slap of the race. This is not going to work. But personal fast slap. Final lap. Final lap of the race. I want to beat my 30.9. Possible with this tire wear? I don't know. I don't have DRS. Uh, both us got Ricardo with a lot of things. And unfortunate for him. I would, li would have liked to see McLaren on the podium. Especially after Bottas made the mistake. But it just shows the Mercedes is very good. 4 5 is real, still going to be very good for McLaren. But I feel like Ferrari should be a bit faster and be close to McLaren. I mean, Aston Martin should definitely be nerfed. Looks like Haas. But I mentioned that this other thing. Right? Not looking too good to be my personal best. It's not that important. No rival. Stappen is slow because of some kind of issue, but his gap to pull test is big enough. Hamilton will win the race any second now. And even with that scare of an engine issue in that first stint, but with great tire wear and a perfectly timed safety car, mwah! Reese Butterfly and Team Pokemon have led the race twice and are going to come home P6 in their debut race. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. P6. Lundgaard, I believe, P12 as well. It's epic stuff. Beautiful. Yes, another historic win Beautiful. Under their belts. Well done to the team at the I still don't know why there was a safety car on lap 10. But no one retired. How do you think Maybe there was debris? I don't know, I'll have to today. look back to replay. Right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Hamilton went for Stapp in second. Bottas does take P3. The McLaren's 4 and 5 are good points for them for the constructors, but... Like, I thought getting five, getting points five times during the season was a difficult enough challenge that I thought was doable, but hard, and I decided to take that risk with my main sponsor, but... If this is our start, where can we go? Don't expect this to be regular, especially the next track is Spain. Usually not very good at that compared to the AI. I don't expect points, but we'll see where we go. Monaco third. I'm looking forward to Azerbaijan. I'm good at Azerbaijan. Definitely one of my favorite tracks in the game. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after an excellent result. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Mick Schumacher gets my vote today. Sure. Let's move on to the constructors. He did win five Mercedes positions. Mercedes moved to the hard. top of the table. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated Fourth. with this weekend of Formula Fourth 1. Fourth the constructors! For the next one. Like, beating Haas and Williams and Alfa Romeo is kind of a goal in Alfa Tari. So, seventh in constructors, I would say, would be a nice goal for, for a person to have at the start of the season. the season. I expect Ferrari will, will overtake probably Aston Martin and Alpine too. But later on with upgrades, maybe I'll overtake them again. Because I'm th I think either fifth or sixth in the standings of my other my team career. But that's the other current, but this is this one. P6. I didn't expect that at all. What happened on lap 10? There's no indication really what happened on lap 10 that caused the safety car. Shouldn't there was some. Why does it say 11? Because the race of the year was on 11? I should say 10. We were on lap 10 when we entered. Whatever. An amazing race. With a perfectly timed safety car, some strong defending. And the time that Stroll and the guys lost behind me after the safety car, and with fighting with me, with Norris included in the part of uh, that as well. That meant they were so far behind that they weren't able to catch up. 
the cap was too big. Kind of annoyed I wasn't able to keep Norris behind, but it's a McLaren and it was a medium, so. Definitely satisfied. P6. Alright, thank you for watching this episode. And I'll see you for the next one. Let me know in the comments any kind of like, response you have to this. Do you like this series? Are you looking forward to more? Do you have any tips or comments about how the sound works, my editing? Please let me know because I'm trying this out. In a way, it's completely new. Um, but I intend to have a lot of fun with this. If you want to catch these live, go to my Twitch stream. Link uh, to my Twitch is always in the description of my videos. Hope to see you there. I stream two, three times a week usually. This was awesome. So that was an exciting race from our perspective. Let's have yours. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Mm, sticking to the track. Actually, you no. I wanted to. I want to do chassis here. answers. He must be thrilled. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do this with a great deal. It looks like you've that. really been focusing on research and development. Yeah, chassis is great. I wanted. I just want to do chassis because I want to get tire wear early. Tire wear quick. Get in, get him into the car quicker. Higher chance of them working. Totally forgot that this was also in the game before we went back to base. That'll be a bit of a weird edit, but lots of acclaim. I like that. Get some money. Minor damage reductions. Very P6 and P12. I'm very proud of the team of both of it, both of the drivers. Epic stuff. I'll leave you with the highlights of the race, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you always remember that you are worth it. Goodbye.